Hello, my name is John, and today we'll be reading The Ancient War Between the Press and the President. Trump is not the first president to mistrust reporters. By Victor Davis Hanson, Washington Times, August 8, 2018. The media are furious that President Trump serially decries fake news. He often rants that journalists who traffic in it are enemies of the people. Reporters have compared Mr. Trump to mass murderers such as Stalin and Hitler because of his dislike of the press. Mr. Trump may be crude to reporters, but journalists are also not innocent. They have brought much of the present calumny upon themselves in a variety of ways. The media seem to have little concern that their coverage is biased, even though polls show that the vast majority of Americans believe the media intentionally reports fake news. Indeed, fake news is not a Trump exaggeration. Despite coverage to the contrary, Mr. Trump did not remove a bust of Martin Luther King Jr. from the Oval Office. Testimony testimony by former FBI Director James Comey revealed that senior Trump campaign officials did not consult senior Russian intelligence officials, as the New York Times reported. Vladimir Putin denied having compromising information on Mr. Trump during an NBC interview after an earlier NBC report said Mr. Putin did not deny having such information. Despite hysterical reports that in testimony before Congress, Mr. Comey would refute Mr. Trump's claim that Mr. Comey had assured him he was not under investigation, Mr. Comey instead confirmed Mr. Trump's story. The list of such false news reports is long. The common theme is that even recklessly derogatory news is seen by many as serving the higher purpose of delegitimizing the Trump presidency. (coughs) Auditing coverage of the first 100 days of the Trump presidency, the Harvard Kennedy School's Short and Science Center on Media, Politics, and Public Policy found that of the news reports with a clear tone, 80% of the stories about Mr. Trump were negative. 20% were positive. Journalists ranging from Christian Amanpour to Jorge Ramos to Jim Rutenberg have argued that the rules of neutral reportage should no longer necessarily apply when it comes to Mr. Trump. The WikiLeaks email trove of correspondence between Hillary Clinton and her campaign advisor John Podesta revealed the marquee journalists were colluding with Clinton aides to ensure the right spin was put on stories before publication. CNN analyst Donna Brazil leaked debate question to Mrs. Clinton in advance. Too often reporters smear the president in the crudest possible ways. Politico's Julia Iaffe suggested that Mr. Trump might have engaged in incest with his daughter. CNN anchor Anderson Cooper was forced to apologize after he cruelly trashed a pro-Trump panelist saying, if he took a dump on his desk, you would defend it. This year's White House Correspondents Association dinner turned into a Trump hate fest as host Michelle Wolf savagely trashed the president. Miss Wolf even mocked the looks of White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. The late CNN host Anthony Bourdain once joked about poisoning Mr. Trump. Religious scholar Reza Aslan referred to Mr. Trump as this piece of shit. Sometimes journalists disparage and stereotype Trump reporters. Recently, political Political reporter Mark Caputo tweeted of the crowd he saw at a Trump rally. If you put everyone's mouths together in this video, you get a full set of teeth. Then he doubled down by calling them garbage people. The New York Times knew when it 
newly hired tech writer Sarah Zhang as an editorial board member that she had a history of crude, racist tweets, some directed at Mr. Trump. Is this war between Trump and the media unprecedented? Not quite. So far, Mr. Trump's attacks are verbal and subject to political debate. Unlike his predecessors, he has not secretly weaponized the government to spy on and harass journalists he doesn't like. Reporters love Barack Obama, but his Justice Department improperly and secretly surveilled Associated Press reporters and modern phone calls and emails of Fox News reporter James Rosen. President John Adams in 1798 pushed through the Sedition Act, barring, barring journalistic criticism of the government. Woodrow Wilson systematically had reports censored that he felt were critical of his wartime administration. His state-run propaganda machine, the Committee on Public Information, had a creepy French revolutionary ring to it. Liberal icon Franklin Delano Roosevelt makes Mr. Trump's bluster about the media look relatively am am amateur. FDR used the FCC to stifle critical news. Roosevelt's congressional allies tried to push through a libel bill to criminalize hostile reporting. At a press conference in the middle of World War II, Roosevelt once handled a reporter a Nazi iron cross and told him that another journalist whom FDR hated had earned it. John F. Kennedy had the CIA wiretap to Washington reporters. There is no doubt that Mr. Trump should ease off his blanket condemnations of the journalists and their profession. But for their part, reporters have to stop creating news where there is none. And they should refrain from personal attacks on the president and his family, and from stereotyping Trump supporters as garbage. In the meantime, we should remember that the real danger to a free press is not loud public bluster from a perceived hostile president. More often, First Amendment threats come from the quiet weaponization of the government against journalists, which ironically is sometimes orchestrated by presidents who are beloved press idols. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. Please subscribe and please communicate with me through commentary on this video. Please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God richly bless you, my beloved.